I'll just have it and say if anyone happens to say it, I'll be like, sure. Okay, so we'll, we'll just go over the answers and then through the Jeopardy game we'll kind of review uh, more in depth a lot of this stuff. But All right, number one, besides the CNS findings, what other systemic findings of tuberous sclerosis are potentially life-threatening or is potentially life-threatening? Yeah, B, so cardiac rhabdomyoma, perfect. What non-CNS cutaneous or ocular manifestations are not associated with ataxia telangiectasia? <laughs> We're really killing it. So limb, length, <laughs> limb length discrepancy is not associated with ataxia and telangiectasia. Oh, that's not a standardized question. <laughs> so I'm going to go it's over a some of these actually. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, telangiectasia is kind of hard because it does have a lot of different manifestations. Um, a couple of things just yeah. because, because it was harder. Yeah. Um, so with ataxia telangiectasia, we have a mutation in a gene that helps like maintain many different things, so including like telomere length, you have angiogenesis, glucose metabolism, so many different things. Um, so these kids who get this have like a like a really um, low life expectancy. How long do you think they live? If you just throw out some numbers out there. 20 years. 25 years is like the expectancy for these kids. And when they get um, cancers, uh, age, uh, when they're younger than 20, you usually get hematological malignancies. Solid organ cancer is a little bit more common in adults. So they have a... Um, much more increased risk of breast cancer in this population, about five times the risk in the general population. And then they have thymus hypoplasia and also like um, uh, IgG, uh, IgG, IgM, IgA abnormality, all kinds of um, infection risk, um, including especially like pulmonary infections, that's usually what they die of. And so there's a lot of different findings here, and we'll go over even more of them, but um, it's, it's, a, it's one of those things where it's just like you're not really sure and they have an increased risk of mortality because of cancer. It's usually a taxi among the vagomatosis. 
Okay, number, number three was maybe a little confusing, so. But what are the diagnostic criteria for neurofibromatosis one? Just the parentheses, abbreviated version, just meant you don't have to be really specific about it, but does anybody have a list or a good mnemonic to remember? Sphenoid stuff. Sphenoid stuff. Yeah. yeah, so bone, bony abnormalities. Well, let me start with this, like there's, there's seven. There's three that affect the orbit or the eye. Of what else? You just said one that's actually one that I don't include. It. Iris. Iris, yes. Yeah, so, so these nodules. Uh -huh. How many of those do you have to have? Two. Two neurofibromas, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, neurofibromas is another one. Uh, this cafe spots. Yep. It's like five or seven or something like that. Six. Six? Okay. No, Say it again. Uh, yeah. Axillary freckling. Yeah. Optic pathway glioma. Yes, optic pathway glioma, and then there's one more. Wait, is that what part of the criteria, though? Mm -hmm. Really? Um, it's uh, like someone in your family. Yeah, relative. Perfect. So kind of a mnemonic I, I've seen before is CALBORN, so C-A-L-B-O-R-N. So the C is... What is that? Oh, sorry. The C is cafe au lait, A is axillary freckling, L is leash nodules, B is bony abnormalities, including especially sphenoid bone dysplasia, O is optic pathway glioma, R is relative, and then N is neurofibroma. Nice. Yeah. I guess I have to remember it based on like what's in the eye first. Like, like a wish nodules, optic pathway glioma, <coughs> or um, uh, a um, plexiform neurofibroma, and then I think of all other things. So that's three things that affect the eye, and then you have a sphenoid wing dysplasia or long bone abnormalities. There's two things that affect the skin, either axillary freckling or inguinal freckling or cafe au lait spots, and then you have a relative. So like skin, eye, bone, relative. I, think of. I can't remember that anymore. Okay. That's good though. Just gotta try harder. I know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. What are the renal and adrenal masses associated with von Hippel Lindau? Yeah. Good. And then there's one more. Renal cell. Renal cell. Yeah. Nailed yeah. it. <laughs> and then last one. What phacomatosis presents with uh, racemose angioma or retinal AVM? E. Yeah. E. Wyvern Mason. Racing Mason. Okay, so next we're going to go over some um, cranial nerve 7. Um, and actually, I'm not going to go over the anatomy because you guys had this review sheet. I wanted to give this to you so you have an idea of maybe like one way to approach trying to understand or learn anatomy. It took me a long time to like put it all together because it feels like with ECSC, it has some information and then you have to look up your own sources and things like that to really understand anatomy and um, especially the uh, clinical anatomy. So I'm going to scroll through this, but we'll go to the actual questions. Um, the quiz questions, not the worksheet on filling in the blank about the um, anatomy. Can you guys all have a copy of this? Yeah, so now, right? yeah. yeah. Or you can put it up on your computer or whatever you want. We're just going to do this together. Most common cause of damage to the upper motor neuron of the facial nerve is. So when you have, um, when you see uh, cranial nerve seven palsy, and we know that it's due to an upper motor neuron lesion rather than a lower motor neuron lesion, what is the most likely cause going to be? A stroke, a neoplasm, or infection? Stroke. Stroke. Yeah, stroke is the most common. Um, and these are all from the BCSE and like main points, I guess. Uh, this, so if there's a stroke to the left paracentral gyrus, um, it would result in what facial muscle deficit? So if you have an upper motor neuron stroke, would you have upper face, lower face, which side would be affected if, if there's a stroke on the left side? Lower right. Mm -hmm. Yep. What? Lower right. So why is it lower right? You have to learn every so unless you stroke out the 
Yeah, so you have, um, uh, yeah, now let's blow up the picture here. So, this is not a very convenient way to do this. Let's go back up here. Okay, so could you explain this, Mike? Basically, you have dual innervation, and so unless you struck out the lower motor neuron, you're still going to have innervation from the um, like ipsilateral side to that upper. Upper, right? So the upper motor neuron um, provides yes uh, input into the uh, uh, the lower motor neuron cell body here in the pons. Um, on, and both of them do. Both the upper motor neurons do. And then with the lower motor neuron, there's only it only goes to um, one side. So you have dual innervation from the upper motor neuron for the upper face, and then for the lower motor neuron, it only comes from the contralateral side. Okay. All right, um, number one here for nuclear. A right cranial nerve seven nuclear or infranuclear lesion would result in what facial muscle deficit? So if you had the other issue, so not upper motor neuron issue, but more like a lower motor neuron issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, right side for lower motor neuron affects the same side, upper and lower. So if you know that someone can't raise their brow, and you, have, you know they have like a you know, seven palsy uh, hemifacial weakness, they can't raise their brow, um, and their lower face is weakened, it's most likely a lower motor neuron condition rather than upper motor neuron. Okay, this is trying to be of like questions we had in med school actually. Damage to the nerve that supplies the stapedias can result in what kind of hearing problem? Can you hear too well, like too many noises, or too little? Too hyper. Well, too yeah, well. too much. It's almost like you have hyperacusis because what does the stapes do? Yeah, yes. Dampen sounds, yeah. And so stapedia supplies the stapes. Muscle, I mean, muscle supplies the, the bone with some more stability and dampens the sound. <coughs> um, so you have all these conditions, decreased hearing, dry mouth, decreased taste, hearing impairment, nystagmus, vertigo, taxia. You have involvement in multiple cranial nerves, five, uh, six, and, and eight as well, and cerebellar signs, kind of like pointing towards a certain region in the brain could be affected here. What do you guys think? And we have, oh, sorry. So you have dry mouth, decreased taste, hearing impairment. Those things could be what cranial nerve or decreased hearing, all these things. The one we're talking about? Seven. And then, um, <laughs> nystagmus and vertigo and ataxia can happen from cranial nerve eight or cerebellar issues, right? And then if you have five and six also involved in addition to other cerebellar signs, I kind of think this is a lot of real estate in a very important area called the mm -hmm. cerebral pontine angle. Um, what what two tumors could affect that area? Acoustic neuroma. Yeah, acoustic neuroma, which you get in yeah, NFC. Yeah. Yeah. Or the other one that we think about in there, meningioma. Yeah, so those are the two main things that we see in that area. Um, Bell's palsy is diagnosis of exclusion, but why do we, if someone, if your patient comes to you and says, well, why did this happen to me? Why do I have Bell's palsy? What do we know about it? Like, what can we say? Probably viral. Could be viral. What? We don't know. Autoimmune, right? Viral or autoimmune inflammation of the nerve temporarily. Um, and what do you use to treat it? Acutely. Steroids. Yeah, steroids. And then some people do antivirals, but that's not necessarily particularly any guidelines. Um, what's the term used to, to describe the co-contraction of face facial muscles after incomplete recovery from a Bell's palsy? So you might see like, yeah, synkinesis, right? So you also see that in other cranial nerve palsies too. You can see it in cranial nerve three. Um, what is the pattern of facial paresis? Would you uh, what pattern would you expect in Bell's palsy? This is kind of like upper face. Yep. So yeah. same side or same side. Yeah. So unilateral upper and lower. All right, um, let's go around and have maybe you guys read some of these. So Jeff, do you want to read the next one? Sure. Number one. Um, what tick-borne illness can result in bilateral or unilateral cranial nerve seven palsies? Um, this could be line. Yeah. Um, and then what, what's the bug that causes it? Um, is it Borrelia? Yeah, Borrelia burgdorferi. Um, next one, 
next one? Do you want to write down this one? Sure. So this is uh, HCV of cranial 7. It's called uh, is it Ramsey Hunt and diagnosed by vesicles found along the course of iteration of the posterior auricular nerve, which includes what structures? Are we talking about like which nerves? So, Seven, um, eight. so auricular nerves, uh, actually posterior auricular nerve supplies certain structures um, on our head with innervation, like sensory innervation. And when I scroll back up here so you can see exactly where it is. Yeah. So somewhere in the posterior auricular, so that gives you a clue. Yeah. Yep. You're going from pinna extra auditory manus and tympanic membrane? Yeah, so you can look in the ear and he's, and I mean, if there's obvious vesicles, you can see these and you can see them getting better over time. Um, and you have the muscular innervation too, as well, to muscles around the ear and the symptoms. All right, uh, where were we? That down. The most commonly affected cranial nerve in sarcoidosis is cranial nerve 7 due to infiltration of the parotid gland. The second most commonly affected is cranial nerve 8. Um, so I actually found cranial nerve 2. I found, okay, I didn't see it here. So I found like a range for 8 and then 2 was sort of in that range. Yeah. yeah it's not very common to have other ones in cranial nerve involvement anyway in sarcoidosis. It's pretty rare to have neurosarcoidosis, right? But um, I found 2 as the most, second most common, so it can get significant vision loss. Mm -hmm. neuropathy from this. Um, Which childhood disorder is characterized by bilateral facial paralysis, chronic facial swelling, and lingual placata, furring of the tongue? Um, Melkerson Rosenthal syndrome? Yeah, right. So what did they, um, what, what, what part of their face usually gets swollen? Like, have you guys seen any pictures of it? Did you look it up and see what it looks like? The classic picture we see, you can see their cheek or their lips, actually, that seem to get um, affected. It's really weird that it's on OCAPs because yeah. there's only like hundreds of people affected with this that have been reported. It's not even it's so uncommon. But it, should, is that, it was actually on. Yeah. Yeah, it was on there. <laughs> okay, let's go over a few more things real quick, and then we'll move on to Jeopardy. Um, all right, so let's do this as a team. So the rest of you guys who haven't answered question yet, um, Brad, Board. Uh, you guys want to go through this together and kind of fill in the blanks to shout it out. So for um, blood first spasm, but not essential blood spasm versus hemifacial spasm is important to know the, the distinction. And there's also other conditions that cause um, muscle contraction type uh, presentations that we'll go over as well that affect cranial nerve 7. So what muscles are involved in uh, blood first spasm versus hemifacial spasm? The larynx is involved in the non essential blood first spasm where you have like hemifacial spasm, which is like cranial nerve 7 muscles, mm -hmm. so. So like you see the whole upper and lower face yes. and all the muscles. Yeah. Great. Um, and as far as laterality, which, which what is a blood first spasm and hemifacial spasm? Uh, so blood first spasm is usually bilateral, bilateral and hemifacial spasm, yep, as it says, as the That's name the is. Name. Yep. <laughs> so what, where is the pathology or pathophysiology of blood first spasm? like extra paired middle maybe, or it could be like stress, because it's like stress related sometimes for some people. Um, there are other conditions that can, like dry eye, right, can also be one of the things that can cause blood first spasm. People so helping to control that will help as well. So maybe the surface of the eyes can be listed here. How about for hemifacial spasm? And that's for the compression of the seventh nerve, typically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's compressing it? Uh, usually like a, I think the book says like a dolichoectatic vessel. Which is, what does that mean? Uh, it's just a weird shaped vessel, I guess. Yeah, so dolichoectatic, it's like this twisty, dilated vessel. It's like this tortuous vessel that's dilated sort of from, um, from hypertension. Um, yeah, which is, that's interesting. So that kind of tells us that we should probably see, we should probably do some imaging to see what's going on there, because what else could be there? Not a vessel, but... Yeah, it could be an aneurysm, it could be a tumor, or something else that's compressing the nerve there um, in, in, the, in the brainstem. So, uh, which one is present during sleep? Yeah, 
hemifacial spasm. Yep. Um, what would you do as part of the workup other than imaging for hemifacial spasm? MRI. Yeah, I mean, I would do an, yeah, I would do an MRI. And, I mean, it, what type of imaging, sorry? And. Huh. MRI. Oh. Yeah, it's vascular imaging. Um, and then for uh, spleffer spasm, what workup would you do? Like, what kind of questions would you ask the patient? Isn't that one of the things too, like, um, I think it's more in kids, like with glaucoma, like they could have like blepharospasm, that could be a sign of it, or no? Am I thinking of something else? Um, I, I think, I, I'm sure there's some kids who have that, but I, I don't think that's commonly seen in kids okay. as much, yeah. I think with glaucoma. I think light sensitivity, I don't know, is, is Maybe like, that's what, yeah. Yeah, light sensitivity. So, like big congenital, I'm not talking about like four. Yeah. Um, we can uh, we can also ask about like you know maybe caffeine intake, stress, things like that. Anything else going on in their lives that could be related to the timing of onset. Um, what would you do for like what are like let's like one or two medications for each of these that you could try? Surgery for hemifacial? Yeah, you can do surgery. Um, for, real quick, for medication for blepharospasm. Oh, there's, sorry. Yeah, like haloperidol, clonazepam. Artificial tears. Artificial tears, yes. That's all 41. Yeah. <laughs> they help. Um, okay, so what surgery would you do for blepharospasm? Yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Take the muscles out. And how much? <laughs> yeah, really, it's pretty surprising. Um, so if you, what are the what are the three components of our orbicularis? Uh, if you had to list them, the three parts of our orbicularis. Yeah. And orbital. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, so if you have if you have all three components, you would think that you maybe leave a lot of it, but actually you take out the majority of it, and people just usually leave a strip of the pretarsal muscle apparently. So a lot of it's gone. Have you seen different varieties of that surgery? Your patients, Dr. Warner. Yeah. So sometimes they'll probably leave more, depending on how severe it is, too. Yes. Does ocular plastics do that? Because I've never seen that surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ocular plastics does that. But it's really the last resort. It's quite a I'm going to give you guys, I'm just going to give you, the, I don't want to take too much time because I want to do everything, but um, I'm going to show you one video and then we'll move on. And I'm not going to go over these questions. See if I can actually open this. <coughs> Today, right? Last, last time I was here last week. <coughs> Hemifacial malcamia is another. This is a bit different, and I want you to tell me how this these these movements are different from blepharospasm. The sort of the seventh nerve, but in this case, probably due to brainstem involvement. This is a patient with multiple sclerosis, and what you can see are continuous, undulating, fasciculation-like contractions in the distribution of the seventh nerve. Now, this disorder is different than the benign orbicularis myocardia, which I think all of us. He's telling you. <laughs> <laughs> This one's more like undulating. (laughs) (laughs) It's different (laughs) from the spasm. It's like a spasm. You know, it's not continuous like this. It's more like undulating. (laughs) 
It's rippling. Okay. okay, and also Fluffer Spasms where compared to this? Where are we looking at right now? Well, yeah, this is the like <laughs> all of seven. Although you can get myocamia without it having to be the whole face. Yep, you can have a, you can have just like what you can have like a certain extraocular muscle. Yeah, it's it's perfectly fine. You can have that too. Yeah. yeah, or even just individual muscles as well in the face, right? So in this condition, um, with this patient has multiple sclerosis, or sometimes adults or kids who have pontine gliomas, you can have a whole face involvement even. And then I will just send this rest of this out to you. You get, well, the point of the last few questions is that for six and seven, um, with uh, facial myokinia and this spastic unilateral facial contracture, these conditions, anytime you have these conditions, um, it's really important to consider that it could be something malignant and to consider, um, really consider getting some imaging for these patients. So, yeah. All right. For the next part, we're going to go over paper mitosis. Can I pull the outcome? Um, how many groups do you want? Oh, why don't we do? Um, okay, so it's Jeff, and I'm sorry. Tell me, Trevor. Your, Trevor, why don't we do try and do like a PGY three and two in each class, and then we'll split up Trevor, Allie, and Jeff. Sound good. So we we'll have three teams. Yeah, sounds good. Can you for us? What's that? Yeah, well, cool. Stay in here. I'm three in our group. I, no, I was, I, it's either one of us. Well, I guess. Brad just saying he's not moving. All right, so Marshall or Ariana need to move away from Brad. Oh, wait, what do you mean? I thought you said away from Brad. need a PGY two and a three. Right, so either you or Ariana need to go over there. Uh, Rachel's already coming to me. Allie, you're in our group. Yeah. Wait, do you have Mike, do you want to be in our group? group? I don't think I can. All right, and then Chris. Yeah, but there's an uneven OK, so Rachel's coming here. So Ariana, you go over there. Oh, between three teams. I don't know. Are there three teams? Three teams. Three teams. OK, oh. yeah. Mike's already there. Oh, oh. Oh. Ariana's coming, Chris. Okay, so, so the way that we're going to do this um, is just everybody's going to answer every question. So just write down your answer on the whiteboard, and then we'll just hold it up. So there, are, there is a lot of repeat information, but it's kind of coming at it from different angles. So just also pay attention, because one question might give you the answer to a later question. Oh. 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 And there, there is basically one benefit to choosing the question, so if you get it right, so kind of try and pay attention to like who put their board up first, but um, because there is a double jeopardy question, so only that person can double their money. Whoa. Team names. All right, so we'll just start. Brad, why don't your team go pick first? Like a boss. I knew you would pick Three hundred. Three hundred. <laughs> so this category. It's not very. I, sh I should have said this category is kind of the harder question. That's what we're going to go with. If you didn't see that, if you didn't get it. All right. So quickly and. Twenty seconds. What are we doing? Can you set a timer? Were we first? I think you were. We were definitely first. I mean, there's no question about that. All right. That was quick. That was quick. So that's right. So NF1 is the most common, and then just for kind of by way of information, those are the incidents. 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 Everyone got it. Yeah. Do we have team names? Oh, man. I forgot. Uh, uh, um, team like a yeah. Best yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Our team name is winning. Well, okay. Winning. Our team name is Team Like ball. a Boss. <laughs> We're going to be team like their boss. <laughs> wow. 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 300. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<laughs> All teams got. Bang that one. We got a trash one. talk ball right All right. Find that via Android. Uh, like, like their boss, I believe you were first. So. All right. <laughs> question, right. But but they held their thing up first. We're just a little too slow. Oh. I I know it's like it's the only way. Anyway. Can we still get the first? I go with three. Just because there's know. one benefit in choosing double jeopardy, yeah. but. Okay. Let's do um, genetics for 300. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ready? So they get three points. Oh, yeah. But all of them, yeah, all of them get points. All of them get points, okay. Got And you, you have to answer, no penalty for answering incorrectly. So oh, we okay. just want everybody to answer. <laughs> I, I will point out that it says these chromosomes. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. oh. So there's okay. two. There's two chromosomes? Correct. You got 10 more seconds. <laughs> okay. Guess I should have put one this no. one in like a box. That was like my Alright, five seconds. Okay. 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 Alright, this is a tough one. Six. <laughs> oh god. That was close. You know, so, oh, so kind of two jump question, right? So what's the condition? So tuber sclerosis, and then chromosome nine and sixteen, and just in in a few charts actually in BCSC it specifically talks about how these genes are also so TSC one is also called Hamerton, TSC two is called tuberin, and then just I tried to pull pictures. I tried to get them from BCSC just because I guess that's where they, they always were. talk about the. I'm Wolf Ripe Yeah. Which is like not what you think of when you think of tuberculosis. It's not what, yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, so back to like their boss, oh, since yes. everybody got it wrong. And keep it. Uh, Jeff, you get um, let's do ocular findings for 300. Right. Ataxia tell. Good. So ataxia telangiectasia, also known as? Lewis Bar syndrome. All right, there we go. Lewis, sorry, excuse me. Um, so I, I really like how strong I've talked about this. There's so many systemic symptoms, systemic things that can go on with like, or ataxia telangiectasia. So just another example. So supranuclear gaze palsies. Yeah, so these kids, like, um, they have ocular motor apraxia. Or of that sort of, and um, what does that mean? They can't initiate movements. So what can they do to help move their eye? They like they rest their head. Yeah, they rest their head. Good. That's all hard work. All right, I think it was. I think that was me. Or was it UK? Yeah. Great. Like like uh, a no, boss. absolutely not. So <laughs> oh, no, no, okay, sorry. Like, like their boss. I'm Dr. Like, Warner. Hey, see you, Dr. Warner's keeping track, so watch him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Like their boss again. Uh, let's go alternate names for two hundred. Four hundred. Oh, 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 yeah, good call, Rachel. <laughs> All right, the one daily double. So only you guys can double your money, but everybody else still answers. So has the same 800 for you, 400 for you guys. All right. You guys have 600. Everyone has 600 points. Okay, you ready? And we still have to get it fastest, though, if we want it, right? No, if you get it right, you get it. Okay, cool. But if you want to pick again, then. All right. All right, here we go. Specifically, the less common name. If you list both, I guess that'll work. All right, fifteen seconds. <laughs> how many? How much did you guys wager? Or what 
Is it double? It's, yeah, it's, it's worth double. It's double, okay. Because we're not I taking away, we're not taking away points. Okay. I'm making it up as we go. Okay. No, I, mean, I just don't understand. Alex is doing a great Alex job. Yeah, they yeah. do. <laughs> All right, five seconds. Actually, yeah, that's 20 seconds. You've seen the, the, the SNL okay. Jeopardy? Oh, yes. All right, time's up. Team, team winning, what did you say? I, th I, th I saw what it says, as long as you want to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, oh nice. nice. So, was it? I, I'm getting tired of the say taxi. <laughs> <laughs> I told you there's repeat information, but repetition, right? Repetition. All right, so again, I mean, it's all these, a lot of systemic things. So, and Strav already mentioned that respiratory infection is a common cause of mortality in, in these younger patients who die with ataxia to agitation. Make sure they get their vaccines. All we can do. All right, like their boss, yeah. killing it. Uh, let's do uh, genetics for four hundred. Sorry. So, name the that was maybe a little confusing. Name the neurocutaneous disease, not the finding, but. Okay. I think I think that says Racemos Angiom. Is that okay? Maybe it's just yeah. someone else, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it to Chris. <laughs> 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 he can read it. We got the right answer. All right, so that, everybody got it right. That's right. So Wyvern Mason or Racemos Angioma. There, there's <laughs> anyway. There's an, yeah. Uh, just as a side note, because this is not considered an inherited disease, it's most common sporadic mutation, as well as Sturge Weber. So just, just bonus tidbit there. That's not Sturge Weber. Uh, correct. No, it's just that that's also a non-inherited. All right. Like there, boss? Okay. You're up, Jack. Let's do miscellaneous for 400. Oh, nice. mm -hmm. Let's Okay. Okay. Ten seconds. Okay, a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, getting old. <laughs> All right, we're good. So again, so Wyvern Mason, race most, so, so due to the intracranial uh, arterial venous malformations, just they can have spontaneous rupture and intracranial hemorrhage. This is the same condition that um, Kamansky talked about at that last Jeopardy game with retina. Do you guys remember what, what he was talking about? Remember that? Remember that right so it was, um, the reason why this disease uh, became, I guess, popular in ophthalmic literature, apparently, is because at Wills there was a patient with Wyvern Mason, who had who was getting dental work done, had an AVM in the mouth, and then it ruptured and bled to death. So it can happen in the brain as well. All right, like their boss. Let's do alternate names for two hundred. Ten seconds. Okay. All right, five seconds. It's <laughs> creative. <laughs> Did I miss something? Wait, 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 wait. Okay. You can see it, good job. <laughs> Getting old. Sorry. All right, anything? Team winning? Winning. Live up to your name. Winning, winning, winning. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Okay. This is this is what I put. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh that's what I uh, Van Halen now. We'll take that. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs>
yeah. I couldn't remember what it was. I own zero. Yeah. So do they get points if they wrote the other name on the Belinda? Uh, so what's so Von Hippel Lindau is kind of I guess the more common name I, I would say, but it's actually also known as retinal and cere cerebellar angiomatosis. So that specific lesion, what are what are we talking about with the description of lesion? Angioblast. Right. Oh, sorry, I put it right there. I forgot. <laughs> uh, yeah, retinal hemangioblastoma. So a couple of pictures. All right. Like a boss. Uh, what do you want to do? 200? This one's that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't look over your mind. <laughs> 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 we don't have to raise it up, right? I mean, do we don't get points if we get it. There's no benefit if we didn't get it. No, everybody gets points if you get it right. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. all getting points. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. I didn't know this. I know it's been a while since you've been first, so. <laughs> all right, that was, they all got it. Yeah. Um, also known as encephalofacial angiomatosis, but Sturge Weber syndrome. And I think this, so this picture is from BCSC. Yeah. All right. Like a boss. Let's do uh, genetics for 200. You have to tell. Okay, okay. Okay. What does that say? <laughs> they, they told me that says so. <laughs> The top ones I crossed out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Extra points for writing big. Thank you. <laughs> I know you were struggling out there. Yeah, I was. All right, good. So 22, so I think these two got it. All right, Yeah. So NF2. 22, all right. Like a boss, on a roll. Um, let's go for, uh, did we do for 100 ocular nope. fights? All right, ocular fights. So what's the lesion, sorry. What's the name of the lesion? <laughs> okay. Can you be more specific than that? Oh, they didn't like their boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll, we'll still take it, but yeah, yeah. we're just like, that's what we meant, is like being more sp specific. Okay. That's right. Did they write in Hammer Talent? Yes. So this is this is in the macula, it looks like, but where else can it be? Kind of. Nerve. Yeah. yeah. Nerve. 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 That's proliferating. All right. Uh, team winning? Miscellaneous <laughs> for 300. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Nice. Here we got it. <laughs> All right. Team winning. Yeah. Uh, like a boss for five hundred. Ooh. All right. Here we go. Like a boss, five hundred. With red. Okay. Yeah. Good. Everybody got it. We uh, reviewed. That was. We already reviewed this, but that's good. All right. Uh, team like a box. Okay. Let's see. Growing on this one. Tree <laughs> A. Oh. oh. <laughs> I, I've heard. 
I need multiple choice. I don't want to. Yeah. Just think about all the things that this condition has and pick three. <laughs> you think it might work. <laughs> Gotta get all three. That's why this is like boss. Was it? Was that? It probably was in a mixture, yeah. Okay. So I don't, yeah, I don't think anyone got them all. <laughs> Cognitive. <laughs> we got none of those. I, I knew it was going to be like. <laughs> and I think you guys put uh, adenoma sebacea. Did was that on we your? Put seizure, yeah. like ash leaf, and then we put what was our third? Hamartoma. Oh, hamartoma. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the, the, okay, the three Brad, things. <laughs> yeah, so the classic triad, so cognitive impairment, seizures, and then facial angiofibromas, also also called uh, adenoma sebacea. So, so it's like these, these triads sort of came about when all we had was like we can look at the patient and see what they have, right? So like clinical findings rather than imaging. All right. Uh, everybody... And nobody got it, so were you guys last? Yeah. yeah. Let's do um, Octo findings for 400. Oh, yes. <laughs> Gotta keep track of that marker, team waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. So NF1. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, because of glioma, so I you're just. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, was sorry, I'm like, so <laughs> <laughs> Someone describe where the where the lesion is and what the shape of it is. The left eye. Uh, uh -huh. well, it's squiggly. And it's known as a like a wow, what is it? Fusiform. Yeah. 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 The tram tracks is a meningioma, right? Yeah. 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 So you can have that glioma. It's an optic pathway glioma that this patient's got. So these can go all the way back. You know, kind of. So I. I always would get the two mixed up, like tram track and fusiform. This is maybe like a was like, well, duh, but so I actually think it's really helpful to uh, I think turn off, but to think about what part of the optic nerve it's affecting, and then that's why it looks like that, right? Because those the meningioma, it's affecting the the meninges are like the dural sheath, so you get this you know thickening of the outside, so it's going to look like that tram track. Whereas this is kind of the glial cells of the optic nerve, so it's just going to blow it up. The other thing that's interesting on that picture is this really asymmetric temporal lobes. Mm -hmm. Make me wonder if there's hypo, uh, abnormal sphenoid bone on one side. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that's a, if it's a weird called out on that slide, but it looks like the right sphenoid wing is different than the left. Yeah. It can be very well just not be like fully um, gone. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, let's go for. Let's do genetics for one hundred. <laughs> Brad knows what it is. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, this is oh, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't want the chromosome. So close. So close. Why did you say Brad knows what it is? Oh, I just heard a big sigh. Uh, <laughs> 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 
Was that not right? Mine was the other one. Okay. How is this for one? What, what was the one? Is it not a one hundred question? That was two per sclerosis. Okay, yeah. Okay, five seconds. Pick a number between one. <laughs> yeah, all right. Eleven. Uh, we just need one more. <laughs> <laughs> no half credit for one on that one. New eleven was something. Yeah, we went with eleven. Is that the gene for this? The gene that's mutated? You guys love this. Oh man, this is numbers. <laughs> ATM. ATM. Yeah. And I. I the only way I can remember this is actually I, I looked up like why do they have telling dictations? And it's actually because again um, the ATM genes associated with like um, angiogenesis and vascular maintenance in events. So um, these people have dysregulation of the hypoxia inducible factor HIF1 and, and VEGF actually. So those are there's extra levels of hypoxia inducible factor and VEGF floating around and they have uh, telling dictations of their conjunctival vessels and also their skin, their superficial skin, you can also see those vessels. If that helps you remember, just I feel like anything helps with these things. But. No, so back to you guys. So you could think of uh, 11 as like two little legs and if somebody say Jack's if they're like... Oh. <laughs> I like it. I will forever. <laughs> Do they usually know? Um, like, do they usually have family members with them? Like, are they aware of that? Yeah. It's, so, are we going to go over inheritance? Maybe? I actually, I don't think I have questions on inheritance. So. Yeah, so what do you think the inheritance pattern is for this? Dominant. Recessive. It's recessive, yeah. Also more recessive, actually. So, yeah, you can have family members with it, but usually. It's hard to say. It's hard to almost say it with conviction. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas most of these neurophagomatoses are what? How are they inherited? Dominant. Dominant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, there is one question on genetics, but okay. we, we didn't spoil it. So. Oh, All right. Let me know it's good. Oh, Alternate names for the same gene. Oh, it's Yeah, you told us we had to pay attention. Okay. I, mean, I know. So I wrote it down right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the problem we're thinking about. This is the list gone. Okay. okay. Strategy. <laughs> so tuber sclerosis is right, but the less common name is Bourneville disease. Sounds like a town. And then just just to go over some of these findings. So ash leaf spots, facial angiofibromas or adenoma sebaceum, chagrin patch, and then ungual fibromas. What's their intracranial lesion? Yeah, tumors. Calcified tumors. Oh yeah. Okay. What is it? You didn't mention the mention the vodka. I think they're um. Right. The I know, right? Seizures, missing my gauge. I couldn't do a good picture of a seizure. Cognitive impairment. Yeah. Those can be calcified in the brain as well. It's like just like the what's calcified in the eye. What's the calcification in the eye? What what Wait, wait, what wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what's yeah. the so ocular stuff with this one? So Rachel just said it. Uh, Astrocytic hemorrhagic. That's okay. They don't have to be calcified though. So the ones that look like the mulberry lesions, those are the ones that are typically calcified. If they're non-calcified, then they tend to be a little more flat. And then they're often associated uh, right around, they're also often placed like right around the optic nerve. Can you points update? Are you going to send this out, by the way? These are really good. Uh, we'll, we'll put it in box. Proprietary. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> Yeah, we can put a box. Let me cool. sum them up real quick. And then can we re review what the vote triad, vote triad is again real quick? Yeah, seizures, seizures in the facial angiofibromas. Nailed it. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Learning. 
Right. Short term research. Short term research. Got a points update here. Like Air Boss has two thousand nine hundred fifty. Like a Boss has three thousand three hundred fifty. Wait, sorry, sorry. What? Yeah. <laughs> like their boss has 3,950, like a boss has 3,350, and winning has 2,500. Yeah, you're winning. Yeah. Wait, we're like... We're like a boss. Dang it. Okay, Just remember. <laughs> this is getting real. All right. Um, I think it was... I want Team okay. Winning to win. Yeah, yeah we got that. Team Winning. Um, alternate names 500. Oh. Here we go. Let's do a jump there quick. Sham blank. What? Blank syndrome. Blank. Oh, See, blank. I got blank right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we're taking Wyburn Mason, but Strav pointed out that there is like an even lesser well-known name. Um, although I couldn't find it in the neuro yeah, BCSC, the neuro so I don't know if it's in the PED section, but <laughs> anyway. Um, Everyone just tries to get their freaking name on everything. <laughs> <laughs> so or names. Okay. But we're, we're taking Wyburn Mason, so. Canar, Manar, Manar, All right, team so winning. Oops. Oh. Sorry. We don't want that one. <laughs> okay, we want uh, miscellaneous for 500. Final Jeopardy. Oh. Okay. It's 802, sorry. Oh, crap. This is so much fun. So oh, but we only have, have a couple. Wager, right? What's that? We have to wager, right? Yes, you have to wager. But only but I, Yeah, but I didn't give a topic, but you need to wager. Yeah, every Just day. Say I don't remember. Like, I have to look at the question. Oh, no, I do remember. The topic is uh, treatment. Treatments? Yes. Specific okay. treatments for fake homotoses. Um, okay. We're wagering everything. Okay. What's the prize? <laughs> There's no prize. Um, a, pie, a potential pie is the prize. <laughs> yes, goes towards the pie. We should What do we have? What are our points? We're, we're oh, what are your points? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you guys, winning has 3,000. Okay. Like a boss has 3,850. <laughs> No, we're a team. <laughs> they've, got like, they've got like 600 more than us. How much are you guys wagering? boss has 5,000 Something with 50. Oh, yeah. I gave a half a point. I gave half credit for it. There was one that was like partially in Scoring. Actually, we're making this up as we go. Dr. Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have viral videos. Like, we'll be right along, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. All right, are you ready? Wagering everything. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
all but 254. No. 25 cents. 25 Okay. No. All right, here's the question. I didn't, it, was, it was zero. Okay. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't zero. No, there's oh, one. Okay, all right. There's a zero, and how much? Go. Anyway, let's just do the question. Ooh, all right. Oh, they, they got it right. They wagered everything. Okay. Anything? It's. <laughs> that is correct, though. We're. Nice. Good job. So, doubled your money. Unfortunately, team like their boss wagered everything but 25 cents, so I think they still came out on top. Oh, yeah, you guys did great, though. <laughs> awesome comeback, though. Simple what is. Simple what is. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Great. Thanks. We're going to talk about the same rollers. <laughs> well, at least we're waiting for the right amount. Have your quizzes. <laughs> we're watching um, and can you show evidence kitchen. that you completed the worksheet? Evidence? <laughs> <laughs> evidence. <laughs>